How crazy was it last week? Some massive things shifted last week. Not talking about politics anymore. I'm just talking about feelings. How I felt, what happened to me, why I think it happened, and why it might be affecting other people. But the full moon and the events of Trump definitely brought it on, and that was the sort of like thing to package it in. Um, for me personally, I found the Trump thing absolutely hilarious. I got carried away with it. I had, a, I had great fun, but I realised that there was a lot of people who were distressed out there, people who were no one love. And, you know, sometimes it's just, things have just got to come out of you, and that's what came out of me, personally, for whatever reasons. And I've sort of spoken about it before, you know, sometimes, you know, it's, my behaviour's a bit mad than that, but... Again, I said it's healthy. But in this case, something quite, and a, and a realisation happened for me. I was having a brew last night watching Crystal Maze with Shane. Love that programme going back to the early 90s. And um, you got, you know, I've got a black coffee here and I've got you know, my phone in, just juggling in between that and I'm watching the telly. And a post came up on Facebook about narcissism. Faye Morris sent it actually. Nice one, Faye. And it said like about other people sort of like reveling in the you know destruction or miss their or their misfortune and getting a buzz out of it. And I just you know like and I threw a coffee on myself. I just went boom. So I left it for a bit and I just thought, hang on a minute, mate. You've got narcissistic qualities, you, if you want to call them qualities. And that's my realization. I think. Sometimes going overboard with a vision of trying to wake people up. You know, I've been through quite a lot of destructive events in my life which has brought about who I am now and I've engineered that. And there, within me there is some sort of a little little sort of buzz artist that loves, for, you know, a little bit of destruction because I know it's very healthy. But that's just me. That's You know, I'm not going to put that on anybody else and I think I have been putting that on other, on other people and it's not fair... You know, it's alright to have a laugh and a buzz and that, but when it starts, you know, being directed, then, you know, there's something wrong there. And I think that is what I've realised is my, my darkest shadow. This is what this full moon's been all about. It's been about other people massively catharsing, let go of, of all of this stuff, repressed stuff, right? Those who were aware of it, let it happen like me, go crazy with it, yeah? Milk it. And then it's been a, shown to me, actually, mate, you know, yeah, you know, you want to wake people up, but it's polar opposite is, is basically, you know, can be just like the Joker in Batman, just buzzing off watching things burn. And, you know, that's, you know, that, that, that isn't, you know, that's something I've got to accept. And for me to accept it and, and, and see it like I've never seen it before, that is something that I'm going to work through, you know, in all of my interactions in life. And then me good lad Shane, beautiful boy, who was just one of my greatest teachers, brought a book back from school from there, and he always gets these books, random books, which come with some sort of, you know, like a deeper underlying esoteric message. It's just the way it goes. So it was about Th Theseus and the Minotaur. Theseus lived on an island, and he brought up by his mum. And uh, he didn't know who his father was. Anyway, it came time for evil King Minos to ask for his subscriptions and his and his tribute from the island. He's had a Crete or whatever. And then he basically is 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 is, is took in basically like you've got in that film Hunger Games. So, um, but before he goes, obviously he's made aware that he's, that King Minos is actually his father, and he's like, wow. The two things that are his birthright are his sandals and a shield, which he has to get from under a rock. Okay? And then he goes on a journey to Athens, you know, to be a tribute. And the test of these tributes is, is to go into the labyrinth and take on the Minotaur. Okay? Obviously on his journey, Theseus' journey there, he comes across a load of uh, bullies, basically. And he levers them all. And along the way, he picks up their weapons, you know, and he, and he becomes more survivalist than that, more of a hero. When he gets to Athens, then his father finds, well, it, 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 King Minos realises it's his son, 
so his head's twisted and what have you, but he falls in love with his daughter or you know, or this other fit bird, whatever you want to call her. She gives him a ball of string as a way of escaping to get out of the labyrinth. Because he's he's having I'm having a lab, I'm having that minotaur man, I'm having him over. The thing is, the minotaur is actually the king's son also. In bull form, born a bull and rejected, ugliness rejected. Build a labyrinth, Daedalus, master engineer. Build it. I'll do so. Tell the story. Do you want to go listen to it? Yeah. Do, it's a shame. Do, do, do I look nice from what's You do. Just take your, take your shoes off and come and introduce yourself. Okay. I, have a no shoe, I have a no shoe policy on the, uh, on the rug. Uh, which is a, it's a white rug and all that. It's not porn out like that, but it's quite meditational. And um, it's where I do all, all, all my shiznits in here, you know. So this this is my beautiful boy, Shane. Taya. Hi. Is I was just telling him a story about that book you brought home from school. Wait, what? What book was it called? Uh, Theseus. Theseus. Theseus the. The and the Minotaur. Yeah. Theseus. Got it out of the school library. So anyway, you can stay there. So. I got into the part where this girl gives me a ball of string and he goes in into the labyrinth built by Daedalus and this ball of string that he unravels helps him find his way back. He takes on the Minotaur and beats the Minotaur, you know, and then sails home. There's a complication at the end, you know, with the, the colour of the sails, but I'll, I'll leave that bit out. But anyway, in terms of unpackaging that story on an esoteric thing, because these things come to you and are uh, hidden messages, especially to do with myth, is um, me having got to this particular point in my life now through courageous deeds and taking people on and being from a certain environment which was, you know, you know, let's just say um, plenty of conflict and me protecting my feelings. Hang on, kid. So along the way, you know, the, the, the sandals and, and the shield isn't enough for it. You pick up bad habits and you pick up destructive habits that have ways of sort of like trying to conquer a bigger vision. So that's where you can pick up some bad habits. Your sandals keep you grounded, your shield keeps you protected. They, they are original elements really, yeah? And that's what you've always got with you. In terms of his father, in order to sometimes move on to a higher level of consciousness, you have to take on... The father. It's always you're that dude. Yeah, he he um the 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 his father is a horseman. He is called King Minos. That's his brother. That is the horseman, the Minotaur. Yeah. Go on. He is so so his brother. Yeah. He's he's got like um he's got a horse body. Um, I mean he's got horse legs um, and the horse body um, and, and he's got a human chest and head and arms and all stuff like that. Cool. Getting back to my point then, picking up these bad habits, he, he's over there. His brother basically, the Minotaur, is his alter ego. Yeah, everybody's got an alter ego, a shadow, a doppelganger some people call it, a shadow. Most people aren't aware of that shadow. They choose not to look at it because it scares the shit out of them. That's the language. And also, but that villain and that shadow, within that lies tremendous unleashed power. Only when the forces are integrated. Yeah, to integrate the forces of the shadow and the light, the ego and the, whatever you want to call it, alter ego, you have to take on the establishment. Yeah, the established ment is mind, mensa, mind, established mind. In all mythology, in all religion, the father is always to do with the mind, the mother, the emotions. So there is a huge battle that, that takes place and the labyrinth is basically, you know, represents this, this reality really. There's so many little fit, pitfalls here and distractions there, but it's the woman's love. The feminine essence, the emotions, yeah, which are represented by this woman who, who, who fancies him, who gives him the ball of string. It's that emotional link that ties it all together, that brings him through because he's engaging the heart. No good just in the mind, he's engaging the heart, yeah. When he takes on the mind, so obviously it's there for all to see. And the shadow is revealed right in front of his face. That is the only way really to move forward is to confront the shadow. The wife's here now. Michelle, so uh, wrong, wrong camera. 
It's family time. Um, so basically, yeah, the the bulls of the horn were all to, the, the the horn and the minotaur were there for all to see last week with myself, and you know I felt very powerful. But I'm now moving forward and obviously want to adapt my ways much more based upon you know more of a peaceful kind of a uh, and loving approach and that of bringing people together and allowing people to do their own things so I hope that was helpful to you that's my personal learning and my personal journey surrounding the recent events what's yours feel free to share personally or in public all the best bye